So I had a dinner on Sunday and I ended up not going to it just because I was so pissed off from the Indianapolis Colts. And I'll say this one more time, man. When you lose in the National Football League, there's nothing wrong with that. It's always how you lose, right? The Colts weren't prepared. They weren't competitive. They just looked flat out bad. And now the Bengals have the tiebreaker over them. So you have a 7-6 and six Colts team, a 7-6 and six Bengals team. The Colts don't have the tiebreaker. And Jacksonville lost. The Houston Texans lost. The Dolphins lost. All these teams in the AFC, the Chiefs lost. Everyone's losing and the Colts lose. And I know you can be like glass half full. Well, we didn't really lose any ground. And you're right, but we still lost, man. And the Colts, they're the type of team that they won four in a row. Of course, they didn't lose in all of November. And then we've got this schedule upcoming where we were just supposed to absolutely crush it with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Steelers and the Falcons, Raiders, Texans. I mean, that's the easiest remaining schedule in all of football. And the Colts, they get off to a bad start. Of course, losing by 20 points to the Cincinnati Bengals. But there is a lot to be optimistic about because our next game is against the Pittsburgh Steelers who just lost to the Patriots at home. They're with Mitchell Trubisky. They have arguably one of the worst offenses in football. And I think we're going to be able to take full advantage of that. But the problem isn't even to this point who we're playing. Like we know we're facing teams that are winnable, that are beatable. But it's more so of our scheme because the Colts, they weren't dialing up any pressure. And I get that, okay, the Colts, they came into this game with the second most sacks despite blitzing the least amount in football. But in this game, it wasn't working. The second half, we went into that tied 14 apiece. The Bengals made adjustments and we didn't. I mean, Jake Browning is a good quarterback. Like, he was great in high school, great in college. I know he was undrafted, but again, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, might win MVP this season. Where you're drafted is, is, is irrelevant, if we're being honest. Browning had all day to throw, and he went 18 of 24 for 275, two touchdowns, and did have a pick six, but still, zero sacks. When you don't have a sack in the NFL, you don't deserve to win. And this is the type of game that the Colts did not deserve to win. By any stretch of the imagination they were bad on both sides defensively of course go out there and let browning torch them they gave up 111 rushing yards even with grover stewart back and then on offense 46 rushing yards i mean i understand that the bengals are are forcing the colts to throw but you still have to run the ball better than 13 for 28 it's just not going to get it done Minshew, 26 of 39. I mean, you throw 39 attempts in the nfl man you've got to have over 240 passing yards especially when you're facing stack boxes to prevent the run. Minshew was sacked three times, a touchdown and an interception. Garner Minshew, and I'm not going to switch up. I hate switching up with my football takes. I went into a Colts podcast uh, last week, and I said that Minshew, he's going to make good plays. He's going to make bad plays, and that's what Minshew did in this game. He was good in the first half, and he was bad in the second half. I mean, it's Garner Minshew. He's a backup quarterback. Like, what did we expect? If the Colts make the playoffs, I'd be happy. I don't care if we lose by 46 points in the play. If we make the playoffs, I would take that as an A season. But we have to get there. And Minshew, he just, he's got to stop throwing an interception or fumbling the ball. And Steichen, you look at what he was able to do with Anthony Richardson, a guy who had like 13 college starts, coming to the league as the third ever youngest quarterback to start a game. And Richardson, he got up to a great start. The Colts look way more explosive. And Minshew does not have a big arm, and he certainly is not very athletic. Now, Minshew is a very... I wouldn't say electric type of player. He's got an electric personality and guys want to compete and play hard for him. But our ceiling is capped with Minshew. And that's why it's important for our defense to get pressure for the run game to get going, of course, because that's who the Colts are, is running the football and making stops on defense, keeping everything in front of them. And the Colts could not stop the screen passes. And it just, they got into situations where they just, they gave up a lot and Man, if we go back to this game, we'd make a lot of a lot of changes, and I know that the Colts will certainly do that going uh, at home against the Steelers this Saturday. So, Michael Pittman Jr. was eight of ninety-five, Will Mallory five for forty-six, Josh Downs three of thirty-two. It was just a quiet game. Pierce who had over hundred yards last week, twenty-two this time. Bad game. I really don't want to talk about it anymore. But I just love the Colts, man. I'm a Colts fan for life, man. Every time I run into one of my childhood friends because I moved. They're always like, you still a Colts fan? I'm like, yeah, man. Sometimes I want to say no. No, I'm kidding. Well, yeah, after last season. But, but yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to be a Colts fan for the rest of my life. And let's talk about the rest of the, the, the schedule, man, and what's to come. So right now, I think the Colts are actually in the playoffs. I want to say we're the seventh seed. We're the seventh. So somehow, despite that, that loss, we are still the seventh seed because the, well, the Steelers are ahead of us, but the Texans lost. If the Texans had won, we would have been in trouble. 
but the Texans did lose. The Broncos won, the Bengals obviously won, the Bills won. So essentially there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six teams with the same seven and six record, and then the Browns are eight and five after beating the Jags. So yeah, we've got that. But for the Colts, their next four games are I already talked about it, but the Steelers, who are just a mess right now. I mean, Mike Tomlin could be on his way out. That's how bad it is. They just don't have any answer offensively. The Steelers can't run the ball. And defense is good, but the thing for Pittsburgh's defense is that, I mean, essentially, if you think about it, it's mostly, you know, Highsmith and TJ Watt. And you can kind of counter those guys out of the game by just getting rid of it quickly. So expect the Colts to have a very, very, uh, how would I even describe this? A very simple game plan is just get rid of the ball in two and a half seconds at, at the max you know or less and that's what the game plan is going to be run the ball a ton falcons are one of the teams that are tied right now for the nfc south falcons they're, they're not really a mess right now but they're the type of team that we, we probably are going to be in a close game with them but we should be able to pull it out and then the Raiders, that's a home game. The Texans, a home game. So, I mean, all four of those teams, in my opinion, just aren't very good. But at the same time, they're not far off from us. Like, the Colts are not a very good team as well. They're just a type of team that they'll make a lot of good plays and a lot of bad plays. And when they make the bad plays, man, we see performances like the Bengals, right? Or like the Jags and things like that. But we've also seen a lot of good from the Colts. But I think in order for this team, for me to really respect them, we'd have to be fully healthy. Like Jonathan Taylor would have to be out there and you know, EJ Speed, like we just, we have to be fully healthy for me to say that, okay, I feel good about our odds. But also there's always gonna be the, the quarterback and that's gonna be Garner Minshew, right? So if we're facing a team with a better quarterback, we're probably gonna lose. Now we're not facing a quarterback better than Garner Minshew, at least in my opinion, until week 18 against the Texans. That's not to say we're going to lose that because we are at home and it's the Texans and we know well, but we should honestly win our next three games. The question is, will we? Because one thing to say we can or do this and that, but, but will we, right? The Colts have got to execute. And I haven't gone and looked at the press conferences from Steichen and these boys and Minshew. Um, I probably should have done that before I made this video, but this is one of those videos where it's just like, okay, I think I'm ready to talk about it. I don't want to, but I'm ready. And I don't know if I'll be ready the rest of this week. So I just got on it quickly and was like, let me talk Colts with you guys. But obviously, like, uh, low energy. I'm normally like, we just won four in a row. Like, the energy was booming, especially after that OT win against the Titans. But the NFL, I mean, it can be volatile. It's as simple as that. There's going to be weeks where the Colts are on top of the road. And then there's going to be weeks where we are low. But that's that's the beauty of, of life, man, is you appreciate the goods. Like, we appreciated the Colts' four-game win streak so much because last season we were asked. We won four games all year, and then we had just won four in a row. And now we just got our asses handed to us by the Bengals. So what are we going to do? Let's go out there and retaliate, man. Let's go out there and, and kick the Steelers' ass. Go out there and finish hot, man, and make the playoffs. Give us some momentum. But outside of that, I don't really have much else to say, bro. I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts, man. 